I'm John Paul Flame, joined as always by Johnny Cake Sawville, Eric Bickle, and Jason Bishop. And joining us right now on the Mattress Warehouse Hotline, NBA Hall of Famer for longtime executive, former player, drafted Michael Jordan, the great Rod Thorne joins us. Hey, Rod. Hey, guys. How you doing? Oh, great, man. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. On the show. So cool. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Now, listen, we were talking about it uh, beforehand a little bit. Um, What's it feel like now with the last dance just absolutely blowing up and you've had this unbelievable career, you're in the Hall of Fame, and yet there's going to be a lot of people, Rod, that know you most simply as the guy that drafted MJ. Uh, you know, that's not a bad thing to be known for, <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth. Uh, it, uh, you know, it was, well, we were very fortunate uh, that, uh, number one, uh, Houston won the coin flip Right. Uh, back in that day, and, and Portland didn't win it because uh, Houston would have taken Michael second. And we were fortunate that uh, Portland had Clyde Drexler and, didn't, and did not think they needed another uh, wing player. So uh, the stars aligned in, in that year, and, uh, you know, we ended up with Michael. When, when I got two questions, I guess. When did Michael uh, sort of show up on the NBA radar where you were like, okay, this guy's obviously a prospect. We seen him hit the game winner, you know, his freshman year. Um, we, we know how well he did in the summer camps. And you're hearing rumblings about a kid maybe. I don't know. Even at, at that time, you might not have been hearing about high school seniors. Probably not. Um, but when did he sort of get on your radar, Rod? And, and then when did you realize, oh, my God, we are going to get this guy? Uh, he got on our radar uh, <laughs> when he got out of high school, to tell you the truth. He did. Uh, yeah. Played in an all-star game in Washington. Okay. In the old arena in uh, Washington, and yep. it was like, wow, the guy's a pretty good athlete. Capital Classic. <laughs> oh, that's Capital the event you're talking Classic. about? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, that was, you know, the first time he got on my radar. It was, you know, he obviously was – uh, the, the most athletic guy on the floor at that time. And, and I had always uh, gone to North Carolina every year, became friendly with Dean Smith, and, and would go uh, at some point in the year, late in the year, to uh, watch tape of Carolina and also the other teams in the ACC. And, uh, and Michael's junior year, when, you know, he'd already been player of the year a couple of times, so he was on everybody's radar by then. In watching the tape, he he stood out like a sore thumb. Mm. And when the day was over, it was about five o'clock, and I went in to talk to Coach Smith. and And during our conversation, he said, "I would never say it publicly because you know that's not the Carolina way." But Jordan is the most talented player uh, I've ever had, and North Carolina had had some obviously incredible players over the course of time, and. Uh, 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 so, you know, we, he was on our radar because he was such a, he was such a talented player, uh, that he was on everybody's radar. Rod, uh, we talked about this before you came on, but, um, if Portland would have taken Jordan at two, would you guys have taken Bowie or did you have your eyes on Barkley or someone else in that draft? You know, it, it's uh, that, that's a very good question. And the answer is that we would not have taken Bowie because our doctor, uh, had red flagged him mm. and uh, said that he didn't feel that his his leg you know legs would or legs would would stand up you know to an NBA season. So Bowie was not in our uh, we weren't he wasn't in our sphere. Uh, who I would have taken? Mm -hmm. I would have taken uh, Sam Perkins ah, yeah. because I thought Barkley wasn't big enough. Mm. Uh, you know, we scouted Barkley a lot, and I kept kept it every time I'd see him. And, and it ended in the SEC tournament when they played Alabama, and Charles had a bad game, got into early foul trouble, and just did, did not have a very good game against a guy named Bobby Lee Hurt, yep. mm -hmm. uh, who had who uh, you know went on to be drafted, but certainly didn't have that uh, Charles's kind of career, but. I, I just said the guy, he's so small. There's no way he can do in the NBA what he's doing in the SEC. Huh. And that, that would have been a, that would have been a mistake. Although per, uh, Perkins was a very good player. 
and had a long career uh, and and was very good. But Barkley was certainly an all time player. So uh, it it uh, thank goodness it worked out the way it did. So Rod, so you draft him, and then how long do you last? Remind me before they before I don't know if you leave on your own or they let you go. How many years were you there actually with Michael? I was there during Michael's first year. First year. Uh, yeah, the uh, the team was sold um, around the All Star break. Uh, the All Star game was in Indianapolis uh, that year, and over the All Star break, uh, the team was sold. So sometime in February, uh, I don't recall exactly when in February, and the team was sold uh, to uh, uh, Reins- the Reinsdorf Group, who still own it, and. Um, it's uh, sometime in March, uh, about the middle of March. Uh, I had several conversations with uh, with Mr. Reinsdorf, you know, regarding the team and you know what I thought about it and where we were going, etc. As you know, normally happens when you have a change in uh, ownership. And uh, he made he made the decision that he was going to go in another direction and. Uh, uh, about sometime around the middle of March, uh, he informed me that he would be, uh, you know, going in another direction. So I was there for basically Michael's first year. So for that year, I'm wondering, so obviously we remember, you know, during the last dance, they highlight sort of the innocence of him, right? Like he, he lived in that, that condo with his mom or whatever or nearby and the other guys were partying, you know, that sort of thing. And then he was like, oh, I got to get out of there. Um uh-huh. But then at some point he transformed into from a naive guy to I think those guys even said like in the third day of practice they knew he was the best player on the team. When did he transform into the alpha male on the team and like it was his team and he was running things, you know, in practice and just sort of he was the leader in the in the team huddles and that sort of stuff. Did that happen in his rookie year? About the third game of the season, Is that right? <laughs> we were we were playing my uh, Milwaukee, and Milwaukee during my tenure had beaten us right. uh, virtually every time we played them. We could not play those guys. We had Artis Gilmore, and they would, you know, Don Nelson, who was a tremendous defensive coach, if you could, and if you can remember that during his early years in the league, and they would steal the ball from from artists seven or eight times a game and beat us. <laughs> and uh, we're playing Milwaukee in the third game. They have Sidney Moncrief, who's the reigning uh, defensive player of the year, among others. And uh, we're down 10 points going into the fourth quarter, and Jordan started scoring every time on the court. Hmm. They, then, they, you know, Nelson started double-teaming him. He still scored. <laughs> then he started putting three guys over on his side of the court, the guy still scored, and he brought us back, and we beat Milwaukee. And from that time on, uh, uh, Milwaukee beat them, uh, beat, beat the Bulls in the playoffs that year, uh, three games to one, if I'm not – I think it was three to one. But from then on, Chicago owned Milwaukee huh. and just kept beating him. But but by, th- by then, he was clearly the best player. He was – his his attitude, even when he was a rookie – and naive, as most rookies are, his attitude was, "I'm a bet, you know, I'm the best player out here. Everybody knows it, and uh, that's the way he played." Rod, can you talk about the Isaiah Thomas dream team thing not happening? Because you were part of the selection committee, right? Uh, C. M. Newton, the late C. M. Newton, uh, who was with, you know, at Alabama, the athletic director then at Kentucky was the chair of the committee. Uh, I was one of the members of the committee, and Russ Granick, uh, the former deputy commissioner, was a non-voting member of the committee. Uh, We were charged with talking to the players uh, when invitations were being extended. And uh, uh, so... You know, I talk. I talked to most of them because I, I knew most of them a little bit better than Russ did. But he talked to some of them, and I talked to most of them. You know, everybody was, uh, you know, interested in it. Uh, Michael's uh, uh, thing about it was that he had played. He didn't know if he wanted to play or not, 
because he had played in the Olympics in 1984 right. uh, when Bobby Knight was the coach, and he had tremendous experience in Los Angeles. But he felt that it was for younger guys, and he had already done it. So that was his initial reaction to it. But, you know, I tried to, to explain to him, as I did to the other players, that it was a once-in-a-lifetime type thing. Uh, you know, the team was going to be one of the great teams of all time, and and uh, uh, it would do a heck of a lot for basketball, et cetera, et cetera. And, and he agreed uh, to do it. Uh, he didn't say that he would not play if Isaiah Thomas was on the team or any other player for that matter. Uh, uh, at, at that time, nor ever did he ever say that to me. Now, was there – with some of the players, there was probably was some angst, you know, with uh, with the bad boy image of, uh, you know, the Pistons. Uh, but when the committee met in um, Orlando, Florida, initially there were five or six players that were uh, that were initially, you know, these are the five or six guys that we need to have on the team and. And, uh, uh, you know, it ended up with, with 10 as several other players were added over the course of, uh, you know, other, a couple other meetings we had. And then we had some, some you know, uh, several conference calls over the course of the year. And, and uh, Isaiah was not, uh, was not chosen. Obviously, he was a candidate. He was a great player, uh, but he wasn't chosen. Joined by NBA Hall of Famer Rod Thorne. He's now the senior advisor to the general manager. That's Tommy Shepard with the Washington Wizards. Talk about how Tommy's transforming this roster. And with John Wall back next year, hopefully you know, it pays off some dividends and more wins, having Beal and Wall together on the court at the same time healthy. You know, Tommy's, Tommy's doing, has always done and is doing a tremendous job. Uh, you know, the roster has been – you know, turned over to uh, to a degree over the last year and a half. Uh, John has, you know, Wall has been out. Obviously, he's been an All Star player for the, you know, for the Wizards for a long time. And uh, you know, he's had uh, Tommy's added, you know, Rui Hachimura, who's got a big future in the league. Um, you know, uh, Mo Wagner had a good had a good you know year for us. Uh, you know, as well as uh, Brown and. And, uh, you know, some of the other players. But, you know, we've got some real good young players. Uh, John coming back will certainly be a, you know, real impetus uh, for the team. Beal had an unbelievable year. To average over 30 points a game in this league is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, he's one of the top two guards in the league. And, you know, we've got another draft coming at some point in time. Who knows when? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, with uh, Tommy's leadership, I think the uh, Wizards are in good hands and the future looks very rosy. Mm, like By the way, when Rod, Rod was an executive with the Bulls, but also with the Nets, you, got, you pulled off the Jason Kidd deal. They went to the finals two years, didn't obviously get over the hump, but you've had a string of successes in your life. Well, I've I've been incredibly fortunate, uh, uh, you know, and and I was in the league for fourteen and a half years. I worked for the NBA mm-hmm. uh, as you know the head of basketball operations, which basically is in charge of anything that has anything to do with basketball on the court. And uh, that was a great learning experience. So when I went to the uh, to the Nets. Uh, I, I was, you know, I, I think I was, I had gotten an MBA, if you will, in the NBA working with David Stern and Russ Granick and those guys who were terrific. And uh, we, um, you know, my first year, uh, we won 26 games. And we had talent, but it, it just didn't fit right. Hmm. And I had known kid from Puerto Rico when the U.S. team was qualifying for the Olympics and he was the catalyst for that team. Everybody wanted to play with him because he did all the little things. Plus, he passed passed the ball, so all those good players wanted to play with him. And I said at that time, if I could ever get him, uh, I, you know, I would, uh, I certainly would. And he became available. We had a great, 
you know, young player in Stefan Marbury. And uh, we ended up trading Marbury for Kid. And Kid gave us what we didn't have a great defender, a great passer. Uh, he helped our chemistry markedly because we did have some, you know, we had Kenyon Martin, we had Keith Van Horn, uh, Kerry Kittles on the team, and our team took off. You know, we went from 26 to 50, some, 51, 52 wins, went to the finals, played the great Laker team and lost. And then the next year we uh, went to the finals again and played uh, uh, San Antonio. And and I really thought we had a – we had a really good chance against them and we won one of the first two games and we were two, two and we lost uh, like an 89 to 83 game in game five. And then they came back from 12 down in the fourth quarter and beat us in game six. But, but we had a tremendous team and uh kid, one of the great player, great point guards ever. Hmm. Rob, man, it's been a pleasure. We could talk to you all day about oh, all yeah. of these stories uh, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Rod. Oh, really appreciate thank it. You, Thank Rod. you, Rod. Thank you, guys. Appreciate great, it. Great stuff. Right. Great stuff. Thank you.